Now guys, we have officially finished the Gojo Past arc with this episode covering from chapter 76 up to chapter 79, but only the beginning bits of chapter 79. Now, I know I've been saying this a lot, but I have genuinely been waiting to see how the anime would adapt the manga into this episode. Because in the manga, you can feel in chapter 76 the despair Ghetto is feeling, but the anime takes it to a whole new level. Like, you knew Ghetto was traumatized by the event of Rico dying and the members of the star religious group clapping in celebration of her death. The manga made sure you knew this was a turning point for Ghetto's beliefs in protection protecting the non-sorcerers. But the anime had the clapping noise from the event play throughout the whole episode. The claps we would hear pop up again and again and I loved that they did that because that's what Ghetto is hearing constantly. He can't get over the fact that fellow non-sorcerers were celebrating another non-sorcerer's death and Rico was just a kid as well so he genuinely couldn't understand why these people are celebrating. Ghetto is not naive. He knows there are evil people out there, hence why cursed spirits exist. But him actually seeing the cruel nature of humanity, such as the people in the village that kept the two girls who also had cursed energy and kept them both locked up, this shocked his whole world. A whole year has passed and he still can't get over the incident with Rico as well. He normally always sees the cursed spirits act all evil and demonic, but seeing everyday normal people being so evil, he questions his whole life philosophy on the reasoning of him being a jujitsu sorcerer in the first place. Another moment I really liked what the latest episode did in comparison to chapter 78, in which Principal Yaga mentioned to Gojo that Ghetto has killed his parents. In the manga, Yaga says that Ghetto's home is empty, but the bloodstains are there confirming that it was him who did the damage. This was in the Viz translation, but in the episode, the translation was that Ghetto's home was already an empty husk. Now, this very sentence alone changes everything, and it actually makes sense now, because at this point, they are still all high schoolers, so you would assume they are still all living with their parents or a guardian of some kind. Ghetto was all alone during his trauma for this past year because if you go what Yaga said in this episode with his home already being an empty vessel then that means Ghetto's parents were never really there for him. When he needed guidance and just someone that he could just talk to, he had no one. His best friend Gojo isn't exactly a guy that you could just talk about your inner trauma to. Maybe now in the present day you can as he has more life experience now but definitely not back then. Gojo was still learning to show empathy to people so I don't think Gojo would have understood why Ghetto was suffering from the event in the first place. But yeah, Ghetto had no one to talk to, he couldn't talk to his parents about his grief and he couldn't open up to his friends at school either. He was just bottling up all that grief inside him and he just kept hearing the clapping every time whenever he starts questioning himself and his beliefs. I made a video talking about the tragedy of Ghetto. If you haven't already, please do go and check that video out. In that video, I mentioned that the reunion between Gojo and Ghetto in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was like you meeting an old friend who had all the potential in the world. They were a straight A student. You would think there is no limit to what they can do and achieve in life. But then years go by and you haven't seen them for such a long time. But then when you do years later, you see them on the streets homeless and are taking and smoking things that they really shouldn't be doing. And you just become sad because you remember how great they were. Gojo had that same look of disappointment when he saw Ghetto on the floor bleeding to his death in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Ghetto was his best friend and now look what he's turned into. He was going out of his way to kill a student from Jujutsu High. That's how much his values have fallen and that he's at that point where he doesn't even care anymore. If you're a sorcerer or if you're a non-sorcerer, it doesn't matter. If you get in his way, you will suffer. He will try and kill you. I think Akutami wanted to show us with Ghetto the consequences of not dealing with trauma and having it all bottled up inside. The anime took it a step further and painted the picture that Ghetto was already all alone in his home. Despite having parents, it seemed like he was never really close with them. I mean, if he was close with his parents, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have killed them. But Ghetto's downward spiral started from his home. 
he was having a mental breakdown and he couldn't open up to his parents or anyone. That is basically stage one of his fall into madness. Stage two is him giving in to his evil thoughts on killing the non-sorcerers, with the final stage with him pulling the trigger and killing the non-sorcerers, which he did when he massacred the village. That scene was horrifying as well, just hearing the screams of the villagers burning, with Ghetto just having a cold look on his face, void of any emotion whatsoever, further cementing that he he has become a broken man and is now definitely in a dark path. I think Kutami wanted to show his audience how not having a healthy home growing up can affect a person as they grow into adult life. We see it with both Toji and Geto in this arc. Toji was abused by the Zenin family and has resulted into becoming an assassin and Geto suffering in silence and being alone in his home has forced him into giving into his madness and started his quest of killing all known sorcerers. Maybe I'm looking too much into it but that's the theme I'm seeing from this arc, how family matters and what it means to be the strongest. Which segues to Satoru Gojo. Gojo in contrast to Geto has done a complete 180 from the previous episode. He went from not even being sad for Rico's death to now trying to reason with Geto saying there has to be a reason for them to kill someone. Gojo the man that didn't care about the weak is now considering himself as weak. Because when he says to Yaga, is he the strongest, he is really questioning himself. What is the point of having all that strength in the big moments in his life such as failing to save the Star Plasma Vessel and having Ghetto turn full evil which results into big events in the Shibuya Incident arc. In these massive moments that really matter, Gojo failed. Despite being the strongest, he was powerless to do anything. He could have killed Ghetto right there in Shibuya but he didn't. He didn't have the mental strength to kill his former best friend. Fast forward to Jujutsu Kaisen Zero and you can actually see both of their personalities doing a 180. Now don't get me wrong, Gojo is still the carefree joker sensei but he has gotten a lot more serious in the way that Ghetto was before his descent into madness. Whilst if you see Ghetto in the movie, he's a lot more carefree and doesn't seem serious at all. It's like not only did their whole life belief swap, but their personalities have swapped as well. Look at the scene where Ghetto comes back to Jujutsu High and sees Gojo there. Ghetto's all smiling and being happy as if nothing happened. It's like Ghetto became the evil version of Gojo if Gojo were to go full evil. Because remember, Gojo didn't care about the normal everyday people. If anything, he hated saving them. So if Gojo were to become evil, he wouldn't hesitate in killing the non sorcerers. And you can say that Gojo is now the fully evolved hero and teacher of jiu-jitsu that Ghetto probably would have been if Ghetto didn't become evil. Add to the bitterness and jealousy that Ghetto probably feels for Gojo in that Gojo is in his own league when it comes to strength and all of them now go on separate missions. It just added to Ghetto being more alone with his dark thoughts. So even if Gojo isn't the best person to talk about this type of stuff, it's not like he actually saw him that much the past year anyway. So this was the consequence for the death of Riko. The rise of Gojo into becoming a sensei, teaching the future generation and the fall of Ghetto, leading him to further loneliness and despair.